So do you think it's possible <laughs> to make five figures by spending 30 minutes a day? I've been doing it for years. <laughs> I can give you guys my latest book at the FS price stage. Okay, so the retail price is 198 Hello everyone, welcome to today's episode of our Traders, Traders Corner. Corner. Okay, and today's episode is a little bit special because it's kind of like my starting point in trading with the guest that we have. Okay, so he was the reason I got into the trading and reason that I teach trading as well. So when I was 18, I wanted to learn trading. So I contacted my teachers in my high school. So my high school teacher asked me to Google Technique Forex, but not TFS, and came across this guy called Khalid Hamid, which ends up become my first teacher in trading. I gave my first mentor in trading and many years later he said that oh, if you already made it then you should teach other people. So it's also the reason why I start teaching. Today we have this man, the founder of Tangy Forex Mana, and now it's rebranded to TFS Price Action Trading and also the best trading guru in Malaysia and with over 20,000 of students online, offline in Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, Brunei, Saudi Arabia, UK and many countries. All right. So yeah, it's an honor for us to invite the guest to this episode, which is Khalid Hamid. And welcome, welcome MK here with us today. It's our very good honor. Hi, uh, Key and Alan. Thank you so much for having me today. Yeah, it's our great honor having MK in Traders Corner. So MK actually is the one person that I'm admire since young, actually. <laughs> because actually I started trading. I thought I thought you you are still young. <laughs> Okay. Today I am 28, but 10 years ago I was 18. Okay. So MK is actually the first guru that I purchased with my own money with the book Technique Forex Sabana. And I still remember after one year of joining the group, I never met MK before. And what I how I communicate with him it was just emailing. Emailing with my chart, my journal, and asking for is it correct this SNR, the DJ trend lines and so on. Yeah, reply. Yeah, you did. Oh, reply. I did. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and actually, all the reply is hit from his own. I was surprised. Yeah. During that time. Yeah. So today, maybe a lot of people are curious about how the actually so called the coach or the guru in Malaysia that how they started actually. So I really hope that MK can share your story to the audience out there. And what is the beginning story and how you started in Forex market actually? So pretty much I started just like everybody else. Uh, you don't have much money. So you try to uh, look for extra incomes and you uh, find ways where you can make income but not through the conventional way. So when I first started in 2007, the internet in Malaysia is already like quite okay. I go into that uh, path. Uh, uh, make money online. So that's why I searched in Google. Um, what with dari rumah. <laughs> okay, so, what with dari rumah. Yeah, make money from home. So using your laptop or PC and internet. So I found three sources uh, that I like, which is selling ebook, trading, and the third one is selling items at eBay. So I go to Plaza GM. I buy all the fake watch, <laughs> fake, <laughs> fake. Well, I can't remember what I saw. Sunglasses. Sunglasses, yes. Yes, Helen. So I bought that fake sunglasses and fake uh, fake watches. During that time, uh, I'm still a naughty boy. So we sell directly to the US and also Australia market via eBay. And you can actually make a lot of money there, but it doesn't last because you are selling fake items uh, in eBay. So it doesn't last. And my luck, only last around one one year plus like that. Mm. So I did manage to make money. And even when I, I went to Hong Kong to work, the business still runs because it was held by my fiancé at that time, which is now my wife. Okay, so then left with two, ebook and also trading. I go for trading because ebook, uh, at that time, I still haven't done any ebook yet. So uh, it will take a long time for me to learn uh, and then to write the ebook. So I go for trading. I went to a uh, seminar uh, and then went to workshop. And, but I still uh, can't really make it at that time because I was just starting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So answer your question. So that's how I stumbled upon trading. 
from there and until now. So what? Uh, maybe you might ask, what makes me stick with trading until now for the next sixteen years after that? So my answer is freedom. Trading gives you freedom, mm-hmm. not only uh, in terms of financials, but also in the state of mind. Because when, when trading, you don't really need to compete with others. You don't have to fight anyone. You don't have to come up with bombastic marketing ideas in order to compete with competitors. So that's what really gets me going. And you can become yourself in training. You don't really need to be someone else. But at the end of the day, it's all about you. Um, whether you are passionate about trading or not, uh, and you want to do it full time or part time, yeah, I highly recommend part time because trading doesn't actually takes a lot of time once you already know what to do, and uh, the rest of your days you can do what you love. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Hope that answers your question. So yeah. the second one is trading. The third one, ebook. <laughs> No, no, the well, first one is ebook. Second one is trading. The third one is the selling the items. Yeah, but you created ebook after that, right? Yeah, trading. Yeah, because after I become uh, much more profitable and knowledgeable in trading, uh, which is I started in two thousand seven, and uh, for the next two years, mm. I'm becoming better a trader. Then that's when I had the enlightenment about becoming a trading. Uh, not to say guru, but I want to educate traders because at that time there's not much resources that mm. Malaysian traders can find in Malaysia at that time. There's no such thing as because 2007 or 2009, uh, you don't have a thing called smartphones. Yeah, so people still trade using a laptop or a PC. So what I did was uh, my mission at that time in 2009. Was to write an ebook because I learned ebook because it's one of my the thing that I found that can be done online. Mm-hmm. So I want to educate traders via ebook. And maybe you 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 be asking why not trade ways go to YouTube right? But during that time YouTube is not very popular. Yeah, correct, correct. That's And ebook is a really a hype. Everybody is uh, buying ebook, selling ebook, teaching how to do ebook. So that's when I. Go into that, uh, go into that path. Mm. I I write the ebook. It took me around two years for it to be completed because uh, I was I was writing the ebook and I was working at that time. So my schedule will be like what I can recall. I wake up at six. I came back from work at 8 p.m. and then at 8 p.m. until 12 a.m. Uh, sometimes up until 2 a.m., I will be writing the ebook bit by bit. That's how my life for few months cycle. Every day for few months. Yeah, every day for few months. So it took you few months to complete the first version of the Technic Forex Banana. Yeah. No, I mean uh, some of the days are more relaxed, but uh, <coughs> during the the peak period when I really have a lot of things to write, is what makes you so committed. What makes me committed? Day, yeah, PM. You know, you work so hard, then so tired. Yeah. After yeah. office, go back, still need to type. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. so exhausting. Hmm. Good question, eh, Ellen. So what really drives me is the I want to be so called like a savior of the traders, because at that time, even basic knowledge people still don't get it. Yeah, so they got the basic wrong. How do you expect them to become a profitable trader? Hmm. Yeah. So that's what really pushed me. So I always say, no matter how tired I am, nobody's going to do it. Maybe some, maybe maybe at that time other people are considering, but nobody's doing it. So I have to do it. Hmm. Yeah. So I have to do it, and this will help a lot of people. Yeah. That's that's how we differentiate from the expert with the normal people is because of the action. Because action always yeah. like, talk louder than the words. Okay. Action and also mighty mission. I would say. I see. Yeah. I see. So during that time, you you are working in the bank, and then after that, you are trading, and so some more you still need to write the book. I see. I see. Yeah. And at one point when I was working in Malacca in 2008, uh-huh. I bring laptop to work. Not because to do my job. My job doesn't require any laptop, <laughs> but to check the chart during lunch break, <laughs> uh, which, which is wrong actually. Because 
uh, during Asian session, the market doesn't move much. Mm, yeah, I see. But how 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 was your performance during that time? Because of when when I am very busy, I'm really very difficult for, to focus on the chart. Yeah, uh, during that time, my performance is uh, you. I can cover some of my expenses. I won't. I'm not getting rich during that time, but I can make consistent money to cover my expenses on top of the salary I'm earning from the bank. So the extra income really helps in uh, building a bigger savings for me. I'm a kind of that, that who doesn't really spend much. Mm. So my most of my money goes to uh, your wife. Oh. saving. Yeah. My wife, no, no wife at that time. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I haven't got married at that time. Uh. Yeah. So you work at bank for how many years? Four years. Four years. 2008 until 2012. Then you quit as a full-time trader. I quit to become full-time trader and educator. And educator. Yeah. But you're already an educator when you were uh, at the bank. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For one year. Because when uh, the first ebook launch was end of 2011. So I worked for another eight months. So... I quit the bank in August 2008. Uh, sorry, 2012, August. Uh, so I was thinking if I can, you know, help traders and then, you know, I can make much more money um, by by doing this full time rather than working in the bank. Oh. So, so it's uh, so those who are considering to quit their job, uh, it's very simple. If your trading income is more than double what you are earning, then you can consider to quit your job. But please. You need to have at least uh, six months worth of saving. Mm. So let's say you're earning three thousand, you need to have eighteen thousand as a backup before you can quit your job. But I think if let's say I want to quit my job, I still have the courage to do it because I will feel anxiety and I will feel the uncertainty when I want to hand in. Let's say I want to pass the the resign letter. Mm-hmm. So what make you have the moment that you are thinking that okay, it's done. I'm going to quit right. Right now, <laughs> okay. Good question, eh, Mr. K. So, when you, when you want to quit your job, so just now like I said you need to have backup, and then you need to have a consistent income, three times more than your salary, and then, and then, you need to have a steady performance at least six months. Mm-hmm. But the best is twelve months. Mm-hmm. So, if you are a consistent trader for one year, then you will be more confident to quit. So, like I shared, I started trading in two thousand seven. And when I quit my job, I'm already at the, my fourth year, mm. which is after I already been trading for f- four years, and then I've been writing books. So you know, when you write ebook, you at the same time you have to learn as well to make sure that what are you sharing is correct. And that's when I built my confidence to resign from the bank. Yeah. Mm. So that comes from after you have the massive success from your ebook, also, right? Yeah. Yeah, of course, that really helped. How many signed up there? More than 1,000. Wow. Oh, yeah. But during that yeah. time, the cost is uh, a bit low, right? The 18, 89 ringgit. So from the first launch, which is uh, around December until January, the sale of the ebook is more than 1,000 units. Wow. Yeah. I remember that time you said you were in some seminar or meetings, right? And at Penang or. Oh, oh, okay. That was a different story. The story was like this. Due to the success of that, I was working in Penang at that time. So due to the success of the Ibu, there's one event where I was servicing servicing the ATM machine. Then the guy that comes to service the machine, so he looked at me uh, quite intensely. He's like, so I was like, yeah, what's up, man? <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, you are Khalid, right? So, yeah, how do you know? The technique for it is from Bernard. You write that book, right? So I was like, wow. <laughs> suddenly become very famous. Yeah, suddenly become very famous and people start to notice. Mm. Yeah, so without me actually like expect that, you know. So I'm not like an actor or singer. But how come people can know me mm. because of that ebook? So from then on, I believe that, yeah, I can make a difference mm. because Simply because at that time, there's not a lot of people who can or who who's willing to teach other trade. 
and even trading itself is not that popular at that time. But did you expect the 1,000 sales during that time? Definitely no. Uh, my explanation that time was if only one people buy that, it will it will be already a success for me. Even for one, yeah, because during that time, uh, I'm not. I don't know. I don't really know much about marketing. So, what really helps me is the affiliate. Mm. So people become affiliate, and affiliate is like an agent. So they sign up and they promote the do it. So some of you might say, "Wow, in one month plus you made eighty nine thousand. So actually, it's not true because I think at that time, almost half of it goes to the affiliate, the commission. Mm. Yeah. But how do you feel when when you are making this kind of money and you look at the bank account? Oh, finally, I did it. It's higher than the, your previous basic job. I was earning a one year kind of salary in just uh, two months. Yeah. Uh, two in a period of two months. But I always tell myself I've been sacrificing a lot mm. to finish this ebook. So it's really worth it. And and you deserve it. And I deserve it, of course. I. I spend a lot of time, energy. I sacrifice a lot of things, especially like my time, uh, in order for other traders to benefit other traders. So I deserve it. From there on, I know that I have to take this road. How do you celebrate your success? Yeah, like, <laughs> because everyone like some of my surrounding when they are earning their so-called the big money in the first time, they will spend a lot. They will buy so-called luxury style. Do you do like that as well? Yeah, I do. <laughs> One thing I can share is I buy I buy CD of one hundred eighty eight of twenty eight at time. Yeah, so other than that, I buy properties and I flip the property well to make offer like hundred percent. Hmm. Yeah. So some of the luxury items I do bought, but I think big chunk of my money goes to making more money, <laughs> like buying properties, and then. Just now, like I said, uh, I buy car. Yeah, uh, no, give some give some money to your family. I remember you said you did compress a lot of properties right at that time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, they call it compression. Uh, compress, compress loan. loan. <laughs> compress loan. Yeah. Invest uh, in order to you know make bigger gains. I lost almost half a million ringgit to pay off the bank. Is it cash to be debt? Yeah, yeah, it's cash. The money I make from trading and everything, so I have to use it to pay on the loan. But how 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 does it happen because of the complex loan and how will it cause you to uh, get into this trouble and then trap you and then you have to sell off and pay the loan? Yeah. So the I would say greed. I was greedy, so I think I already made it in trading. I can mm. make it in other. Investment industry. as well. There are in other industries as well. So, I bought that property. I used a lot of money to buy that properties. But then, at that time, actually, it's already at the peak. Or the the property the prices are not going that much further anymore. Hmm. So I've been a slave to the bank for around seven years. Seven years, almost seven years, from 2015 until 2022. Where finally last year everything is sold and I'm almost debt free. Mm. My debt is much more manageable now. So at one point in my life, at the age of thirty, I have almost four million of debt. Can you imagine? You are thirty years old. You're supposed to be, you know, starting your career and all that. But for me, that's when I got into a lot of trouble because financial trouble because of. Uh, The corporate wrong. loan because of a uh, wrong investment decision, mm. or maybe wrong industry as well. I have to work super hard to get out of that uh, debt. So you're yeah, committed to like, okay, I need to get out of it as soon as possible. So that's why you <coughs> paid everything upfront cash. Even you sell property below market, right? Yeah, you have to sell below market. If not, people are not buying it. Mm. For example, you buy it for one point three million. You cannot expect to sell it at 1.3. Initially, when I uh, invest or buy that property, I want to sell at 1.5. Hmm. You know, I can make maybe like 200,000 profit. But what happened is, I have to sell at 
which is two hundred thousand below the the price that I bought, um, to because I want people to buy it so that I can be debt free. And if you sell it, I've tried to sell it at one point three and then reduce to one point two for three years, but it, do, uh, it doesn't attract buyers. Once I offered one point one something, then only there are a lot of uh, people inquiry. Yeah, inquiries. So that's when I. Uh, that's why I figure out it's re- very hard to get a buyer, uh, especially during COVID. After COVID, very very hard to get a buyer. But what's with the five hundred thousand ringgit cash though? Right. Yeah, because let's say you take a loan for one point two million, and then <coughs> you sell for one point one. Just example. So your loan balance is one point two. You're selling at one point one. So you need to top up the one hundred thousand difference. So for my case. I have to top up around two hundred fifty thousand for one house, so two house, so it's half a half million. Half million, yes. During the time you compress, how many how many properties actually you bought? Um, three, three properties. Yeah, I see. I was lucky because I'm about to buy another three property in Johor, <laughs> but I, I think the loan got rejected, something oh. like that. And then uh, it was cancelled, and I'm thankful for that. So God, God wants to save me from, from uh, doing more mistakes. During that time, actually, what is the what are the offer actually? Because uh, I the do have some friend that got trapped into compressed loan as well. For their cases, it's like number one, they don't need to cash uh, back, right? Cash back, <laughs> cash back, of course. As the second one, they do not no need to give the down payment. Hmm. Uh, and some they can give some so called reward. Yeah. So for me, I would say no rebate, no cashback. It's just that you can buy the property with just five percent. Uh, sorry, three percent. You pay uh, booking three percent, and then get the rest. All, the rest all they take care of it. Yeah. So what did you learn after five hundred thousand ringgit loss from properties? Bank make money from you, but how do you make money from the bank's money? So in my case, for example, you invest in property, you expect, okay, you expect to make money from the property market, which is capital gain. Mm. The price goes up, so you sell at profit. But that is if, <laughs> okay, a big if. If it goes up, something that's uncertain. Whereas for the bank, it's already uh, fixed. It's already guaranteed that you are going to give them income. For a period of like thirty years mm. for a mortgage, so that's when I learned that if you want to invest, never use borrowed money. Use cash. Uh, use cash. And uh, in my own personal opinion, whatever I want to invest in today's world, I'll make sure that within two days I already know whether I'm, I make money or not. So, like property, I mentioned to you that I become a slave for the bank for seven years. Uh, after seven years, then only I know that I lose a lot of money. But when uh, so now, the lesson that I learned, the big lesson is, if I want to do something, and invest or trade, I must know the result within two days. So for example, like trading today, I trade. By the next day, I already know whether it's a loss or it's a profit. Don't don't over leverage. Then don't take too long in order to. Get back your investment, and you need to differentiate between short term, medium term, and long term investment. So because all these will have different expectation, right? Yeah. You see, I I I do receive. I think Ella also receives some of his clients says that they planning to apply loan and fund it into trading. So maybe MK can give them this kind of advice that not to do that. Because <laughs> a lot of people that think that. I must have the bigger capital to do it, so they will go and borrow the personal loan, the easiest one to get, or government servant they will go and apply so-called angkasa loan. So maybe MK can advise them not to do it, or yeah, yeah. So out of my experience, uh, 12 years teaching other traders, I have never met even one person who took loan and become a successful trader. If you take a loan and become a trader, actually. You are most probably guaranteed to fail.、Mm. You know why? Because the outcome of a trade is uncertain. You will never know 
what is the outcome of a trade. Mm-hmm. And if you trade using borrowed money, which is the money that actually doesn't belong to you, you are already at a dis- disadvantage uh, psychologically and also financially. Mm-hmm. So I've never met anyone become uh, successful uh, using borrowed money. And so you need to remember that if you're not a good trader, you will lose that money in a very short period of time. For example, maybe you lose it like Ellen always shared in 90 days. Mm. You will lose that money. 90 days is very short, which is three months. But you're taking that loan for five years. So you want to pay back the money and then you already lost everything to the market. So how are you going to pay the loan for the next, uh, for the next five years? Right? Never, never use borrowed money to become a trader. Because you just don't know what's going to happen next. But many traders will think that, yeah, the reason why I'm still not profitable is because my capital is small. So if I borrow money, I have bigger capital, I have bigger funds. Okay. To that, I would say, if you can't make money using small capital, you will never make money using bigger capital. Yeah. Yeah. True. Do you guys agree? Yeah. Yes. Uh, if you can't control small money, then you can't make, you can't make money using bigger capital. The, because your blueprint, your trading blueprint is 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 like that, which is a loser. So it, actually, the capital doesn't matter. You, if you use 1,000 or maybe even 10,000, mm. you will you won't make a difference because you will, you will still lose the money. Mm. So from my perspective, is like this: if you take loans, you are risking the money that you don't have. Yeah. yeah. So if you screw that up. You still need to pay the loan, yeah. you know, but but you can no longer get anything back from trading anymore. Yeah, you know, so 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 it will make you stress out. Actually, your performance will get worse. Yeah, I think the pressure, anxiety will come. Yeah, up. everything will come. Yeah, then you need to you don't have a carefree state of mind. Correct, which is very important for a trader. Mm. If in order for you to be an an effective trader, mm-hmm. you need to be free of any disturbance, mm. whether it's financially or emotionally. Or for example, I just give you a, a very simple example. Uh, if, you have, if you fight with your partner, yeah. okay, you fight with your partner, your husband, your girlfriend, your wife, it will have an impact to your trade trading performance yeah. until you resolve that matter. So same goes to your financial. If your financial is screw up, your personal financial is screw up. You cannot become an effective trader. It's hard for you to make a judgment. Because it will be clouded by greed and also FOMO. You want to make money quick, mm. uh, yeah. and not, and those sort of psychological problem in trading. You really, you really need to be uh, in a carefree state of mind, relax, uh, for you to make money in trading. Well, how should they do it though? If they cannot take loans, then they only have few hundred dollars to trade. How should they do it? Like. Uh, you you uh, uh, you might be surprised with my answer. So my answer would be, they have to train themselves using a demo account, because nowadays there's a thing called prop trading, proprietary trading. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you train yourself using a demo account. Make sure you can make money mm. and you don't break the prop prop trading rules. And when you are ready, whatever your the money that you have, you can take a prop trading challenge, mm. which is only a few hundred dollars. That's true. Actually, actually, when you have the yeah, uh, can I, can I, can I add on a bit? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, because the problem with traders are they they are lacking of practice. Mm. So mean, meaning that when they don't practice, they don't have a skill. Mm. But they have the money. So instead of polishing their skills, what they do is they go jump straight into the financial market to trade. Mm. That's when they lose money. So in every everything in the world. In order for you to be good, you need to practice. You need to polish your skills. So I, I just recently shared uh, during class, for example, like MMA fighter Conor McGregor, for a three-minute fight, which is the first round of an MMA fight, he he have to train for six months mm. just for three minutes. And Usain Bolt, the 100-meter World Olympic champ, uh, champion and also world record holder, he practiced for or trained for four years then only he, he's able to run below 10 seconds. True. Right. So, so for 10 seconds kind of work, 
the practice is like four years. Same goes to Conor McGregor. Mm. Six months or more of training just for that three minutes of the fight. So traders, they are lacking in terms of their practice and also their skills. They don't have skills, but they straight away go into the uh, throwing their money. hard-earned money and expect to make a quick buck or expect that trading is going to change their life. So actually, they have to practice. They yeah. think they can retire after learning one month. <laughs> Usually, this is the so-called beginner mindset. Lah. I do have, last time, also, I, I want to retire after learning like Me. two to three months. After I bought your book, in book that time, I thought, yes, six months I can retire. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so nowadays, actually, uh, because a lot of people have been teaching, sharing, so to become a profitable trader doesn't really take years. Mm. If you have a good guidance, Within a few months, and you already get uh, to know what you need to do. And with prop trading, makes things even easier. Okay, back to back to I think 2012, is it? Uh, Can I add on a bit on oh. how I find trading? Oh, yeah. and that, yeah. <laughs> this is a part I missed out. I, I think it's very important for you guys to listen as well. So I started trading uh, in 2007. So that, during that time, I was a student. Mm. Okay. So, as a student, uh, I was one of the top students. And since I'm a top student, okay, in University of Malaya, since I'm a top, top student, it's very hard for me to find someone, uh, you know, like, uh, what, what do they call? Like-minded, is it? Um, like-minded or someone that you can get along with. Yeah, yeah. Because at, eventually, they will depend on you. For example, like assignment, when yeah. you are in a group Free rider. you will be a leader you will be throwing ideas mm. and they will just like listen and follow so uh, so that's why uh, I like to do most of the things alone because I can't rely on people instead people rely on me so that's where that's why I, I want to become a trader as well mm. yeah because uh, most of the time uh, it's me that in the market I can I can live by my own uh, so so to say mm. so like doing assignment answering exams and then I even work part time so I'm pretty I'm very independent during my university days so while studying I'm working I'm working as well maybe you can see me like few, uh, 20 years uh, is it 20 years maybe like 15 years ago on the in the mall like one Utama the curve I was working there that's one traits that I have which is independent that's really suitable for me to become a trader because traders as a trader everything depends on you you don't really need to listen you to others and the market yeah so you don't really need to follow other people what other people are doing and that's why I think trading is uh, good for me hmm. so back to my question just now is Actually, a lot of people think that the trading lifestyle is like travel while trading. And then I, even me myself, I tried once before. And when I travel, I trading, but it's all losses. So again, have you experienced this kind of trading lifestyle? Like you say, you like to be lonely, right? Yeah. So, so do you enjoy the trading lifestyle, which is not so lonely, like travel, parties, you know, all the bad boy stuff? Yeah, okay. Uh... When I become successful, I'm already a married man. Oh, so not so lonely anymore. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but to answer your question, I did find difficulties trading when I was in Europe. Mm. I went to Europe for almost two months. Mm. So the problem is with the timing. Mm. So you are ha- you have to trade, and at the same time you want to enjoy the place where you where you are. Mm-hmm. Uh, com- in in contrast to if you are in Malaysia, the active hours the London uh, sorry the New York session only starts at 8 p.m. Mm-hmm. so by that time we are already at home no relax uh, we already finish our day job but when you are in Europe uh, the London and also New York session happens during the day mm. so it's very f- difficult for you to enjoy the enjoy that place and at the same time become an effect become an effective trader I see so it's like lunch hour yeah yeah you can do whatever you want like travel you know uh, sit at a cafe doing your trading work so so to speak yeah but eventually everything has a limit 
because as human, whatever we do, at one point we'll get bored mm. and we'll be looking for other adventures or other things that we want to do. I, I was like that when I become a full-time trader, I go travel, then trade while traveling. But uh, eventually after that, the uh, the passion to do that, uh, it will feed off. So you will realize that Malaysia is still the best place to live. <laughs> yeah, actually a lot of overseas traders from yeah. London, US, they, they, they moved to like Asia. Uh, Thailand, yeah. Bali, Malaysia, Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Because of the time, right? Because of the time, yeah. They can trip more sessions. The London, the US sessions. Yeah. Uh, uh, if they are just in US, then maybe they can only trade the US sessions. They can only trade the London sessions because it's in the morning, you know, early morning. Yeah. If they are in London, then afternoon is a US session. Like what you say, maybe they are working, they cannot focus. So yeah. that's why yeah. a lot of them move here. So what do you do after, after your trip from Europe? So I went there in 2017. Mm-hmm. So when I came back, I finished my uh, latest book at that time, which is Quality of Fast Price Action Trading. So when I came back from Europe from 2017 up until May 2018, mm-hmm. I was writing a new book called TFS Price Action Trading. So from there on, it's, it is known as TFS Price Action Trading and no longer any Forex Muna because the TFS Price Action Trading uh, from the name itself, people know it's price action and it doesn't really concentrate only on one market, which is Forex. So nowadays, you can trade any market that you want, US indices and then gold, mm. currencies, uh, US stock. So it depends on you which one you like. You can still apply in the same uh, strategy. So what what makes you, inspire you to rebrand it into like from sheets from Basel to English. Actually, full, full complete is English, right? Yeah. Uh, one of it is because of the Google result. People don't really Google Aksi Harga, you know, price action. Oh, <laughs> oh. People don't, the technique Aksi Harga. <laughs> All the while, people will know uh, this thing is called price action trading. That's what we've been teaching, actually. So if you notice the earlier ebook that I did, uh, I did teach or taught a bit about indicators but then after that I totally scrapped everything off and just focus on uh, price action it's a totally new content yes and even new with the even the latest one the uh, pacer mm. even it, that's the latest one which will definitely work for the next five years I don't plan to write any other the book for now <laughs> any new content yeah I see so after you launched the TFS Pride Action, I still remember after it, it was COVID came, right? Yeah. And is it affect your trading or the sales? Because a lot of businesses affected <laughs> during COVID time. Yeah, I agree. But uh, for trading, it's a different story because uh, in 2020, and um, I still remember it was in March when first PKP, I'm, that's the most money I make. Wow, trading career. <laughs> really? Yeah. It's the most highest money. Income. Yeah. In trading and, and all that. In trading. In trading. And after that few months, few months after that, I did my first online class. And there are there are up until seven hundred sign up for the online class. Wow. Which is generally usually people sign up maybe like hundred or two hundred. But this time it's seven hundred. 700 people sign up. So because of the COVID, because of the COVID, uh, a lot of people are uh, having a hard time. Mm. Yeah, their business collapsed. They might be fired from their job. So they're looking for uh, an alternative uh, to generate income. That's and, right. Yeah. Yeah, go on, go on. Yeah, I, I, I really, I also know a lot of traders who started trading after COVID. Mm. Yeah, that's when trading became relevant slowly. Relevant and more popular. More popular. Yeah, before this, it's like trading is like topic for, for the people out there. It's like, oh, they scam. Money <laughs> game. Get rich quick. But after after COVID, people are like, yeah, trading, I think it's some serious. Yep, it thing. works. Trading works. You see, there is an interesting data that I found in Google, Google Trends, actually. So I was searching for the keyword Forex market in Google Trends. So actually, the surging result 
it's the same like the 10 years ago oh. when all the money gang came in so actually this is the why the reason that forex market cap actually is climbing back up in Malaysia and also the worldwide as well so MK uh, like MK is one of our mentor so it's like MK mentor do you have another mentor of you yeah yeah I would say yes um, because uh, throughout these years since I started teaching other traders in 2011 so people look up to me I consider myself as somebody who are self-taught okay self-taught I learned a lot from our sister trader one of them is Niall Fuller from Learn to Trade the Market he doesn't do video or only like blog that. post just a blog post so mm. I read and I understand what I digest what he's uh, trying to deliver mm. so if you ask me now after that until 2018 I decided that uh, I want to learn again I want to learn again so that's when I stumbled upon Trade Society mm. Trade Society yeah that was by Rolf and also Moritz two guys from Germany mm. so I signed up their online course and to my surprise they did their first ever offline workshop in Singapore so I did not hesitate and I signed up for their course mm. in Singapore and then again together with Alan oh you went as well we, we, but went, they yeah, mm. we went right before COVID strike a year after December Singapore. December 2019 yeah. and again they are very generous to do another session in uh, in Southeast Asia which is Manila so there are a lot of participants there and so uh, they are not coming to Malaysia so you 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 want to learn you have to make the sacrifice so we take a flight stay in a hotel and, and we went to play one hotel room well, and then we, we, do, we go for the class yeah. we don't just go for the class for the knowledge so, yeah. Yeah. what is make them special like MK also want to attend for me actually my <coughs> trading performance is, uh, after Trade Society because Trade Society is more like that time they are one of the best right in, 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 in the internet so when we look up so MK said let's join the class I was like okay let's go then my trading performance actually improved a lot afterwards as well because they are way that the way they look at the market and the psychology and the money management are different so a lot of improvements from there and this is also my first time learn from overseas gurus overseas traders that managing high eight figures if I'm not mistaken yeah funds so so I get to le directly learn from a you know, high figure from the trader so 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 yeah but man, improve a lot especially the trading plan I have a personalized trading plan trading journal the whole process improve a lot but how about you your trading performance improve a lot after trades ideals yeah, right it's re really skyrocket because they make us uh, they make us realize that trading is just not about strategy or technique and uh, it's more than that so your life will also translate into trading you cannot have a you can have a disciplined trading if you are not disciplined in life and then the way they look at the market uh, is it makes sense which is they don't really go against the flow so for example buy at support if you buy at support you are actually going against the flow so what they thought is you need to you need to buy at resistance that makes more sense because the price is going catching up to the resistance the buyers are picking up the bullishness is there so you have to buy mm. then you sell at the uh, resistance because you think that the price is going going to drop so that's one of the key difference in what they are teaching at that time and then they thought about thought a lot about risk management besides that uh, how how do you improve your psychology when you're trading so they also recommend a lot of books mm. so these are the kind of uh, mentors that you want so they, they not only teach you but they also guide you on for example okay what what book you should read to become bet to have a better trading psychology so they recommend trading in the zone mm. so those are the, and then he did mention Pitbull Trading Champion that one I have yet to read so uh, I've been keeping in touch with them then yeah I'm still 
trying to learn from that, especially via podcast as well. Mm. And that was in 2018, by the way. 2018. Yeah. And so it really changed the way I treat. Treat side, so it, it's uh, our mentor is a little bit special. It's he's shared that the biggest thing that trading is not just about making money, but it's a way that for you to find yourself. The journey of self-discovery, yeah. your inner self, everything. Yeah. So, so that's why the way we teach right now, also we focus a lot more on the mental game in trading. Yeah, because that's the one thing that can make you really, you know, be a Powerful. profitable trader. Yeah, yeah consistently. Powerful. Yeah. So maybe in the future, maybe we have a chance. Could we have a chance to invite them to traders corner as well? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I'll take actually, it. actually, you can do it the digital way, meaning that they are. No, we will fly over to to Min. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So shout out to Tri Sati, and I hope we can interview you in one day. Okay. Oh, by the way, so so after you have learned from uh, Tri Sati, and then you have rebrand the uh, price action uh, TFS price action. So so can you share how you trades before before the rebranded TFS price action trading, and how you trade after you have rebranded and after you learn from Tri Sati after you went to Singapore and Manila. Okay, uh, the content of the book prior to learning with them is more on the strategy and not much on psychology and also risk management. But after I learned from them, actually uh, much more content on risk and also psychology has been added to the latest book. So that's why it's almost double the pages from the previous book. Yeah, because I add on more Uh, more on strategy, risk, and also psychology as well. Mm. So before this, in terms of strategy, something that works before this is you buy a support or sell resistance. That's the the typical or common ones. But then after learning with them, uh, and then I do my back test and then chart studies, I notice that it makes more sense to buy a resistance and sell a support. And the key. If you are doing analysis, one key important thing to look for in the chart is the turning points of the market. Mm, the turning. You want you want to see where the price turn, uh, the make the U turn, make a U turn. So because that for a 7.5 trillion market, it doesn't really simply change because the volume is too high. So there must be a lot of orders going to the market that change the direction of the price. So you need to pay attention on that level. So that's what I've been teaching in the book. I see. After after trade society, I don't really feel the need for me to learn from someone else. Name. Yeah, since they are still actively le- teaching as well. So I, that's that's my mentors. Hmm. I see. I understand. And I I I like the way they they, they teach. It's easier. It's easy for me to understand. So some question and I'm more on personal. I want to ask MK, like okay, like Please myself. See whether I can answer. No? Like myself, I planning to marry actually. Okay, planning okay. to get married. Right. And yeah. how actually MK? Because when I know MK, actually MK is just married and uh, still don't have any kid by that time. During that time, okay. So what's the lifestyle change before marry, during marry, and after you have kids? <laughs> so is it affect a lot or? Do we get a lot of support from them? Okay, I think like any other parents or family, you will face a lot of resistance uh, when you want to quit your job and to pursue something that very risky, which is on business. So my, but my wife, this is why I share here only. Yeah. <laughs> so my wife that time give me a target. If you can make more than fifty thousand, you can quit your job. So that's what I did. So I hit the target and then I quit my job. She, uh, I got her blessing to quit the job, but that, then there's a problem. When when I quit my job, there's nothing really much to do because we were a first-time trainer. Right. So that's when I become more aggressive in educating traders. I create a YouTube channel. I do a lot of sharing via Facebook. I did a sharing via. Uh, blog posts. That's what really what I'm doing on a day-to-day basis. Mm. So that's what happened after we got married. My wife has become a housewife since the day we are married until today. So wow. So she's like my biggest supporter, and wherever I go, she's like my best friend and the one who's really uh, always there with me. 
until today. And then, after we got kids, after seven years of marriage into 2018, after after we got kids, I started to downsize my life. For example, before we had two cars, so we sell one car because we don't really need it. Mm. Like I said, we are always together, mm. so there's no point like to you know today you drive this car, tomorrow you drive the other car, so actually it's really useless. So we sell that car, so we really we, we really simplify our lives, and then. Uh, with the newborn, I find that having kids makes me a much more disciplined person. So before this, because we don't have kids, so as an adult, so you can do whatever you want. But once you have kids, so your life must be structured and must be systematic as well. So that's how from uh, stay, so from staying few hours in front of the computer or laptop I only spend less than one hour per day on trading because I already have a system and I already know what to look for in the chart and it doesn't really take a lot of time so most of my time I can spend with my family and kid at that time uh, so when I have another kid a few years after that so things get uh, gets much more interesting uh, because uh, the, then, then I start to uh, wake up even earlier at five, and then I organize them, manage them, then spend time with them, and the uh, I become a much more disciplined person. Hmm. I get more things done rather than you know rather than not working at all. I'm becoming more efficient with my time and also my my productivity. Yeah. Does that help in your trading though, like the two kits that you have? Yeah, yeah, it really helps. And in trading, actually, once you already know what to do, you need to spend the least amount of time uh, that you can on trading. Well, the more time you spend staring at a chart, actually it's not good for your mm. trading psychology. So what you need to do is you look for trade opportunity. If there is opportunity, you execute quickly mm. and then you shut down your platform, go to sleep, and then wake up the next day, and then repeat the same routine. Every single day. The, the, the routine, could you share with me, with me more, more specific, how you wake up, like 5, 5 a.m., right? Just now, 5 a.m., and then yeah. you do... Yeah, yeah. Okay. How's your daily routine? Eh? My daily routine now? Yeah, I mean, right now, right? There's a lot of people say, oh, but you always say you're busy. You yeah, know? so, so, so. <laughs> yeah, what's your room? Okay, my routine for those who are listening, I wake up at 5 and I'll be doing some work. So those kind of work are like uh, maybe social media sharing, do YouTube or do a podcast episode and so forth. And then at 7, my kids will wake up. Uh, then we send them to play school. And then after that, uh, by around 8, I'll be back uh, home. So I'll go for my workout. So after workout, I'll go for my shower. So it will. So I will finish at around nine thirty. Mm. Then at nine thirty, if I'm not going out with my wife, then uh, I'll continue doing some light work until lunch hour. Then after lunch, and then usually after lunch, I'll take a short nap around one hour. Mm. Well, when you wake up at five, you definitely feel tired at the, uh, in the afternoon. So I'll take a short nap, maybe one hour, and when I wake up. I will do some more work if there's any work. If there's no work, usually what I'll do, I'll be uh, watching Netflix mm. and then I'll be reading books. And then at around five, I'll be uh, going to the play school to pick up my kid. Then after that, we came back, we go to the playground, play until around seven. Mm. Then we had our dinner. Then after dinner, we spend time with them, maybe like watching TV, watching cartoons on the TV until around 9. Then I'll excuse myself because it's the US session I know, time. Yes, trading time. <laughs> so uh, we are during the US session time. So I'll excuse myself at 9 until 9.30 only to do my trade. I see. So because I already know what to look for when I trade, so I don't really, uh, I don't really spend a lot of time trading. So, so you might be surprised from 5 
that the whole day I'm not talking about trading mm. and only at 9 p.m. I look for opportunities to trade because the best time to trade is during the US, US or New York session. I see. Interesting. Yeah. I don't really look at the chart when I say I'm doing work, right? So mostly I'll do videos, replying emails, give sharings through Telegram, social media. So those kind of those kind of things. And I don't feel tired doing it because that's my passion. Mm. And it's been my passion since I started uh, educating other traders. Because I don't see a lot of people doing that nowadays. Even after 12 years, not many authors on trading books that you know from Malaysia. Not many people do videos, not many people do blog posts, podcasts, and all this. Mm. So, so I see that as an obligation, uh, so-called like obligation for me to not keep on educating. So we'll see whether people give like, give comment or not. I'll just keep go- doing it, keep posting. Yeah. But how how is it like you have only like for example you trade only half an hour nine to nine thirty, so if let's say throughout the half an hour if let's say there is no any opportunity, do you force yourself or how you train your mindset like because of if let's say you are you didn't trade any entry, meaning that we don't have any income coming in. Yeah. And if let's say we are forced ourselves to trade in a loss, and we are like floating the loss, so how you do you train your mindset like this half an hour? To make sure that you are in the right mindset. Yeah, because I already spend the day in the best way I can. I spend time with my family, I spend time with my wife. Uh, so just now I said, if I'm not going out, I'll have lunch at home, right? Mm-hmm. But some of the time during the days, uh, we will spend our days at the mall, having a good lunch and then good coffee break, staying in the cafe, you know, talk about family, anything, or relationship. So, I already spent a good time uh, during the whole day. So when I start trading uh, at nine, I'm at my the best part, best best state of mind, best best state of mind, and mm. I wasted nothing. So if you ask me, what if there's no opportunity? So, good question. So what I do is I say I just go to sleep, <laughs> I'll set a lid, and then sometimes. I happen to wake up at maybe around 1, 1 a.m. for example. Then if there's any opportunity, I will trade that time. As long as it's within the US session. As long as you got the alert. Yeah. So do you think it's possible for <laughs> you to make five figures by spending 30 minutes a day? I've been doing it for years. <laughs> because many people are still like, no, you need to work a lot. You need to work hard if you want to make more money. You know? No, it's not in trading. Not in trading, right? Not in trading. The like I said, the practice or the training, yes, you will spend mm. countless hours of back testing, screenshot taking, and then. But the execution itself, just like I shared about Conor McGregor, mm. so six months of training, intense training, but when the trading itself, it's only three minutes. <laughs> Correct. So, if you're a trader, so the thirty minutes itself is more than enough. Once you already have a good training uh, over a period of time, uh, which is a few months, so you already know what to do. So in trading, you don't need to spend a lot of time in front of the chart in order to make more money. What you need is more capital. That's it. For example, like for example, your, your performance is five percent per month, and now you are having like hundred thousand capital from prop trading. So if you want more money, you just need to have more capital. Mm, but not the increase the percentage. Increase the percentage will be more challenging because uh, reward is something we cannot control in trading. We can control our risk, but right. we cannot control our reward. Right. So if you are th- thinking about, uh, I want to make ten percent instead of the usual five percent. Mm. Uh, it's very simple. You just do the same thing. It's just that you increase your risk. Mm. But when you increase your risk, then you increase your, the probability that you will lose your capital as well. Mm. So the smartest thing to do is increase your capital. That's more. That's much more easier. So from 100,000, 100, if you manage to add on more fraud trading capital, let's say to 200,000, so with the same 5%, from 5,000, you will get 10,000. You double your income because you double your capital. Mm. Right. And 
even five thousand dollars in ringgit, it's more than twenty thousand. So that's more than enough for average Malaysian to live. Yeah, it's like if you have five thousand dollar, you make two percent per month, which is hundred 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 US dollar. But if you have fifty thousand dollar, you still make two percent, but now it's thousand. Yeah, five hundred k, ten thousand. Uh, because one hundred can't really uh, change your life, but one thousand can do a lot of things. You can pay your mortgage, your car car loans, you can pay the bills, and so forth. Yeah, so. It's important for traders to understand that uh, the reward for for their effort must be worth it. Mm. So a lot of traders they have very small capital. So even though they make ten percent, uh, so it's just ten dollars out of hundred from hundred. So this ten dollars of profit uh, is really nothing. You can't do much. But if you have a bigger capital, ten percent is a lot. Mm. Yeah. So that that's how you can. Bring joy to your life and also change your life to the better. Hmm. And some of one one k USD is like average earning in Malaysia already. Yeah. E- even in KL. Yeah. For fresh grad. Yeah. For so let's say example MK. If let's say you have a time machine to fly back like 15 years ago, and uh, what is the top one advice you could give yourself, the youngest yourself, or also the so called the beginner they are going to start? Okay, that's a very good question. I will advise myself to just use a demo account and practice my skills according to the prop trading rules, which is not to lose five percent in a day and also ten percent in total. So, and I need and educate yourself to raise one percent per day, not per trade. So, if you already know how to manage a hundred thousand account, and then you you have been consistent for maybe like three to six months. Then save up some money to sign up for a prop trading challenge. Because mm. you already have a training, and then well, what you need to do is just to do the real thing, uh, rather than I depot MC depot and keep jadi kaki depot. Yeah, jadi kaki depot. Might as well you brush your or polish your skill. That's mm. one thing that that traders are lacking. Right. So polish your skills, and then. Start right, which is like I mentioned, use a demo account, fifty thousand or one hundred thousand, whichever you you like. Then once you are ready, you can uh, make a consistent money. You can hit the target without reaching the rules. Then you can sign up for the pro trading uh, capital because uh, once you get funded, whatever profit you make after that, it will be very significant. Mm. Rather than you try to make money from hundred USD. So you now you are trading with fifty thousand USD. Even with five percent, it's already two thousand five hundred. True. So after profit sharing, which is uh eighty twenty, mm. so maybe you are end up you are you are end up around two thousand is it thousand dollar for example. Mm. Okay, two thousand dollar is around eight thousand ringgit, eight thousand plus. So that really will help your life. Mm. So that's what I would advise my younger self to. Okay. So for those out there, maybe you are listening right now. So we surely advise you to polish your skills and not just become the kaki depot. And one last thing about our podcast is actually every end of our podcast, like I mentioned in the previous podcast, we will ask the VIP to give something to the audience out there. Okay. So in this time, we also requested some of the things. What is the things that actually MK can give to the audience? If let's say. We hit some certain views of this video, ten thousand views, let's say. Oh, all right. So I can give you guys my latest book, which is the DFS Price Action Trading Basher, which is uh, the retail price is four hundred ninety eight ringgit. I can give to, uh, I can give five. Okay, I can give five. five. Special five. for traders' corners. Okay, five thousand. So, what's the rules? Let let us set. Right. How how many views we going to break through this video? Ten thousand, uh, five thousand, five thousand, five thousand. Wow. Okay. I think that is very higher chance. But, but how do you guys want to pick the winner? Okay. They have to comment. Yes. Yes. So so we will explain it in detail in the descriptions below. So all you need to do is to follow all the steps in the descriptions, and of course you have to follow MK's uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram as well. Okay. 
And then we will pick out the lucky winner on the date that we set. And the lucky winner will contact us and we will then contact you. Okay. Sure. So five winners. So make sure you are one of them. Okay. Stay tuned. And thank you, MK, for today. And we really appreciate our mentor. Thank okay. you so much. Thank and you. Have a blessed day, everyone. All the best in your trading career. Thank you. Bye-bye.